All right, welcome back to this tutorial. This is part two. Um, we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to show you how to get a project set up in Unreal, how to set up the auto setup plugin in Unreal, and um, I might do a part three on how to like further edit the animations because you'll see when we get in here, I've already done like a temporary one that I wanted to test everything to make sure I wasn't selling y'all no bullshit. Uh, the animations is kind of broken, but you can fix it in another program. I, I'll do another video, like a part three, to show that. So we're going to go here. I want, uh, first, you want to start up your Unreal Editor, and you want to start up a new project. Make sure it's first-person uh, template. Go Blueprint, just to make everything fast, and we'll call this uh, YouTube Arms. I spell that right? No, I arms up. And that'll be saved there. You got to remember where you save your projects. It's very important for the step on bringing in the plugin. God, I look washed out. Uh, let me fix my light. Maybe there. Oh, yeah, that does look a little better. Let me change the brightness of my screen. Huh. I don't look so washed out that I got it on scenery. Sorry, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at myself in the bottom just to make sure I don't look like crap. You know, image is everything. Now, like, <laughs> okay, so now that we got our project set up, um, we can literally close out of this and go inside of the directory where that project is located. I'm on my other screen right here. Um, I saved that in the folder called Unreal, right? Unreal. Let's open that in a new window. So you want to go to the project folder, and that was called YouTube Arms. And the auto setup plugin, I'll leave a link for that inside of the description if you don't know how to find it. You need to download it, run it. Don't worry about it. It's not going to hack your computer. I know it pops up in Windows Defender and stuff like that. But run it and install it so that you could get those two folders, the content and plugins folder. And all you do to set this plugin up is paste those two folders inside of whatever project you want to have your um, CC3 characters come into. So uh, for the next step, we'll just go ahead and get back into the project. And if you go there, you can see that the character creator plugin has now been enabled. Uh, if you're wondering about my UI, man, I'm using that that uh, minimal UI. It's it's crazy, man. Just just look at how the blueprints look. Like it's not that bulby blue shit. Like it's real. It's nice, man. It's sleek. Uh, if you want that, I'll try to leave a link for that GitHub in my description as well but yeah so the first thing you're going to do is go to the content folder create new folder and we're going to call it um meshes go in here and make another folder just to keep things organized and call this fps underscore arms and inside this folder we'll finally import that uh character model that we edited inside of uh, CC3. So I think I saved mine inside of Project Mangus, which is up here. And it was tutorial and it's tutorial arms. Is it tutorial arms? Let's just go with tutorial arms one because I know I've probably done a million other shits. <laughs> um, so you don't want to bring it in as a skeleton or anything like that. You you don't want to worry about uh, important animations. Um, you do want to use time zero as reference pose because that that's the baked in animation, the reference pose. Um, and inside of here, you don't want to create a material. And I think I forgot one more thing. You want to import morph targets as well. So. Just to reiterate, bring it in as a skeletal mesh, import the mesh, 
don't set it to any skeleton. Um, you also want to import it uh, with the TA uh, time zero as a reference pose. Have all of these things selected here, smoothing groups, mesh and bone target or hierarchy and morph targets. And please, for the love of God, do not create a material and do not import textures. So after you do all that, go ahead, import all. And it'll do its thing. The auto, auto setup will tie in the textures that they have put inside the project folder and link all the stuff together so that your fucking shaders don't look like crap. I'm going to leave a picture up on the screen of how the shaders would look if you just import them from, like, you know, Blender or something. Like, if you took the mesh in the Blender to edit it or something, I'll leave a link, uh, like, a picture of it right now. Uh, save everything, you know, you don't want to lose anything. And go to the skeleton. So... You want to go to current skeleton and add a resource target name or retarget source name, and that's the uh, tutorial arms. Next thing you want to do, if this already isn't done, is to select the humanoid rig. If you go, you see it has all of the fucking bones already laid out for you, um, and it works out pretty good. And this rest pose is the pose that you export from CC3. It comes with the Unreal Open A pose. And if I go in here and show all the bones, um, you can see all the bones are there. It's just the mesh is missing. And can I see how many polygons this is? I wonder. Uh, polygon count. Triangles, 9,693. And when we exported it, it was like 33,000 or something like that before we deleted all the hidden um, triangles. So you want to save that. Let me go back in there. You want to save this skeleton rig. Um, and you also want to go to the first person character mesh and go to the first person skeleton and add... A resource name as well for here and you want to set this up as a humanoid rig as well go ahead and save that you can close both of these now um, so because they're already set to mimic each other um, the next step you want to go inside of your folder where you save your character arms and you want to uh, Open up that skeleton again, I'm sorry. And before we get there, we want to already have our grip point for the gun there so it doesn't look so broken. So find the right hand, which is on the, the right clavicle, hand R, right click it, and you want to uh, add a socket. You want to set this name to whatever you want to set it to, something that you can remember. But uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Skeleton animation, skeleton animation scale. Oh, all that's right. Okay, so now we just gonna do the full nine. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can go in here and uh, mimic these one by one, um, but you can also right click on the anim blueprint and just duplicate and retarget the entire anim blueprint. So I know that this looks weird, and I've actually asked Reillusion multiple times why it doesn't match perfectly like their old videos does. And this is something new, because the old uh, like retargeting system matched perfectly. I don't know if that has anything to do with how things are working out, but uh, they definitely need to, to look into this. So you just go ahead and make sure these are checked and hit retarget. It'll duplicate all of the animations and the anim blueprint for you. So save all that. And you can go into the animation blueprint, and now you can see that your character is holding that that gun idle pose for you. The one thing that's messed up right here is this wrist twist, which can be fixed in another program called iClone. And if you have CC3 and you don't have iClone, 
you're pretty much selling yourself short with the um, with with the with the suite. You need to have CC3, uh, iClone 7, and you need to have 3D Exchange because 3D Exchange allows you to do something like this where um, just so we can set up for a part three, you go into the first person, um, where is it at? The first person character, and you go to the animations folder. And for that idle, we can go here and we could take this animation and we can export it. We can just export that animation data, save it somewhere. I'll save it um, in that, inside that same tutorial folder uh, under a new folder called uh, t uh, t Animation Tweaks. And we'll save this first person idol as a um, FBX 2014 um keep all these at default and you don't want to export a preview mesh you don't need it so um go ahead and export that and you can bring this animation in through uh 3d exchange and apply it to your iClone character which can be the same arms you can have i'll show you everything you'll have this project set up with these arms you could take the uh animation bring it inside of iClone and tw twist this wrist to look right because the way the animation was made was specifically for the way the mannequin looks it's not thinking about flesh or anything like that so you have to further tweak it like you can retarget and get the basis of the animation which is great it gives you a good starting point but uh to perfect it, you have to take it out and tweak it more. There's never going to be a one-off solution to just, you know what I'm saying, to copy something. You can never do that. The, I don't think the world works like that. So <clears throat> we want to go here to this blueprint. Uh, I did that by clicking on the drug in one inside of the project and just hitting edit first person blueprint. But you could also go to, you know, first person blueprint blueprints and go there as well um, I probably should have one of those highlights on my on my mouse um, yeah so go into the blueprint oh that looks good man get that minimal get that minimal shit so they can make this like support this shit so it could be like default or something this looks great I love it uh, but yeah we're gonna go here to the viewport and we are going to select the mesh for the arms. And we're just going to swap it out with our tutorial arms. You see they come in. They don't look bad, right? And this is one thing that bothers me. But nothing's perfect. And you have to do extra work on the outside to make it perfect. But you bring in... Oh, uh, I forgot one step. So compile that just to save it. Um... You have to take, and it's in, you go to that duplicated blueprint and just rename it to blueprint two. Say you have like a thousand arms remapped to that blueprint. You don't have this same first person blueprint, first person blueprint a, a hundred times or whatever. You want to know which one is which. You see, we lose some muscle definition here. You lose the tries, you lose this right here, which is weird. And I think Reillusion is gonna fix that with their mesh. And there's actually a plugin that lets you do joint driven um, mesh deformation. So whenever this joint goes up, this muscle will fire up and make it look more realistic. But for now, this is what we got. So now we have to take this gun and parent it to that socket. Reset the transform, um, which is, what are you doing? What is this? Is this the one we're supposed to use? No, it's this one. Okay, so I, uh, I don't know why it's in the compile. I guess that socket is somewhere weird. Here, let me just uh, let me just delete this. 
and bring in an entire new um, skeletal mesh. See if that solves it. And call this gun. Find our first person gun. Comes in pretty good. Let's attach it to this mesh. Oh. And we want to parent that to the socket. Okay, there we go. So now let's reset the transform. Um, the rotation is weird. You just have to rotate it on the z-axis. Uh, I think that's negative 90. Nope, it's 90. I'll just multiply um, 90. And we'll have to do a little tweaking here. Let me turn down that sensitivity. You just move your scroll wheel down while you're moving around. It'll mess with the sensitivity. Here, um, one thing you could do is to pause the animation so that you could work uh, work without this animation going. What the? F I don't know what that just did. I don't know what that just did. Ah, so we found our problem. Okay. So go back to your arms uh, socket, and you need to copy this right here. You need to copy this, take it, and paste it there. That should... Um, Fix it? I guess not. Oh, okay, okay. This is the target. Target is the gun. And the parent is the mesh. There we go. So, sorry. Uh, since I deleted the gun, I kind of broke the code. And now we got it, uh, we're back. So let's go here, let's move this up a little bit. Let's turn off the snapping so we can get precise movements. Um, let's kind of shift it this way a bit, just to, cause you're not gonna see this side, you're gonna see this side. All right, and I think we could uh, rotate it just a bit. I guess they had it rotated for a reason. And like I said, uh, you'll be able to take this and further e uh, edit the animation, like the pose, you further edit it inside of iClone. Like we could tweak this thumb, we could tweak the wrist. Um, we could tweak this thumb, move it back. Have it all set up and make it look pretty. But now, if we go press play, you see we have our own custom arm in there now. Let me go to full screen. It looks all right. It looks pretty good. But yeah, that is the end of part two. That's uh, If you need any assistance, man, get in the comments below. Um, make sure you save everything. If you need any extra assistance to get in the comment below, I will leave a Discord ch channel in there. You can join that and ask me questions on my Discord. Um, but yeah, uh, tune in for the next video. I'm going to show you guys how to further tweak this idle animation so that it looks perfect inside of CC3. Thank you for watching.